In this video, I'm going to show you how I improved my EPC score from 54E all the way up to 99A. I'm going to show you how that impacts on my bills, that I now have a zero home energy bill, and how this has increased the value of my property by 50 to 100,000 pounds potentially. So, first of all, Let's review the existing EPC before we made any upgrades. Then I'll go ahead and walk you through and show you some of the improvements of the home. And then finally, I'll show you the updated EPC that reflects the changes that we've made. And let's have a look where there's still a little room for improvement. If you're interested in content that can help you save money on your bills, make your home more comfortable, add value to the property of your home or cut carbon emissions, make, your, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching so much. So straight away, here is the rating when we bought the home, 54E, one point away from being a D-rated home. And a lot of that was to do with poor insulation, old boiler, etc. We're gonna show you some more during this little review. If you're not aware of what an EPC is, it's an energy performance certificate. You have to have them now for selling a home, renting a home, lots of reasons why you might need one or might have had one. Um, and there's uh, many things that they check and there's a calculation behind it. And you get points for energy efficient measures like LED lights and efficient heating, etc., and good insulation. But here you can see on my previous one, there's a few things that it uh, says are very poor. Electric under floor heating and weirdly the old uh, non-condensing gas boiler which was very old still got a rating of good it's a strange system don't pay much attention to what says good or average or bad or very good or very poor because um there's not much rhyme or reason to those things but it's the points behind the system so you can see where we started Cavity wall, 1996 built property, 140 square meters, the original loft insulation, fully triple glazed, and that was probably the, the big upgrade that the previous owners put in. I had a very old um, non-condensing gas boiler, electric underfloor heating in the kitchen dining area, quite a big space, um, very poor, and uh, old programmer and room thermostat and yeah it had some led lighting and then no insulation on the floor so let's move forward the calculation that the sap does that's the system behind an, an energy performance certificate it calculated that we need 240 kilowatt hours per square meter and um, that's an annual calculation so um, how that actually translates into bills uh, it says that an average household would need to spend uh, so much and this was calculated at the beginning of 2022 so of course energy prices have been volatile since then and uh, this is just a kind of it gives an indication to people interested in homes and if you are interested in your impact on the environment then it gives you a projected calculation of the carbon emissions an average household produces six tons and this property um, potentially uh, was producing 5.5 tons and if we uh, upgraded and took the measures to uh, all of the recommendations at the end of the EPC we could have uh, got the uh, emissions down to 3.1 tons of CO2 so let's have a little look at some of these recommendations I'm going to move myself over here um, you can see it uh, it's just the way that the system uh, goes and the way that it scores things you can see we could move up by two points from 54 to 56 by insulating the floor uh, low energy lighting wouldn't actually get us any points but it would save us some money um, uh, TRVs on the radiators that would get, get us an extra two points replacing the boiler with a condensing boiler that would get us an extra four points uh, solar water heating will get us an extra one point and then solar panels as we know them photovoltaic panels would get us another eight points in this little uh, situation and that's 2.5 kilowatt peak which is the six panels that we could get on the front of the house southeast facing so that all being said how did we manage to jump from 54e 
is when we bought the house and the assessor uh, rated our potential if we took all of those measures to get to 71C. How on earth did we get the property up to 99A? Step one on the journey was getting rid of the old glass roof that was on this conservatory and fitting the best uh, roof system that I could find. So I bought the Lecker roof kit, ripped all the glass off, ripped the old aluminium frames, which are terrible conductors of heat and thermal bridging and fitted this very high performance roof on here, which brought the U-value uh, as a complete system. The old glazing, it would have been something like 2.5, it brought it down to 0.15. And although I've got a few uh, finishing touches to add to it, this has been an absolute game changer for the comfort of the house as a whole, because this space was so leaky. And one of the reasons it was so leaky is because there are no partition doors between the rest of the kitchen and this space that was used as a dining space. It was just an open conservatory. And so all the heat was sucked out of the house and fitting this insulated roof on was just an absolute game changer. And there's a dedicated video series on this, all the steps, everything I did with this a couple of years ago. If you're interested, go and look back at some of the older videos probably a link in the description to this project. The next step was loft insulation. And so we've got here in our middle section, a hundred mil of PIR and below that hundred mil of normal loft roll insulation. And then chipboard on top, top up of loft roll that we put around. Um, you have to go back and watch the previous video for the details. But I think from memory, I put 200 millimeters of loft roll down the outside. You might be able to make it out, the lighting is terrible up here but the original 150 mil was under there and we put 200 mil on top and some of it is compressed down and settled and stuff and then in the middle here we've got 100 mil of the existing loft roll well it was 150 but it was 100 mil once we pressed it down the existing joists that were there were only 100 mil high you know two by four and so then we laid the pir on top and then we laid the chipboard on top of that. And once again, there's a complete video about this and hopefully I'll remember to put it in the description. Probably the most important bit of this was checking it with the thermal imaging camera because as much as I thought I'd done a really meticulous job and I'd been really, uh, you know, fastidious with making sure that all of the loft roll was tightly packed together and no gaps and stuff, the uh, most revealing actually wasn't using the thermal imaging camera up here. Um, it was actually using the thermal imaging camera in the bedrooms and having a look and checking the ceilings. And you could see a couple of spots that I've missed. And then I was able to come up here and identify it. thermal imaging camera, absolute game changer for this job. Then in preparation for our heat pump, we upgraded most of the radiators throughout the house. And uh, during the installation, a few of the bigger ones were also upgraded and a couple of new ones added. But it was a pretty fun activity to do with my kids because changing radiators is so easy. And uh, we were just uh, doubling them up and making them taller. And so we didn't have to alter any pipe work. Very simple, very straightforward. Then once we'd done the cheap and easy radiator upgrades and done our insulation, time came for the heat pump and all the gubbins that went with that. And once again, I'll link in the description the video for that. So there's a lot of detail, a lot of hardware, a lot of stuff to know. And then once we had the new roof, I put the new roof on, we had the heat pump fitted, it was time for solar. And as you know, 16 panels on the back, six on the front of the house. There's many, many videos about that. Most of the LED lighting upgrades, very easy. Some of them a little bit more complicated with some of these, uh, lighting strips which are now wavy hands under cheap from screw fix a little bit more effort with the wiring but uh, we made sure that we are 100 percent led throughout the house and then the newest addition to the home is the battery storage which was added to our existing solar hybrid inverter and that kind of completed the package and that's when we decided to get an epc as some sort of quantifiable paperwork some certificate certification some way to uh, show in by some sort of metric anyway that the home has been improved so now you've seen some of the improvements i want to talk you through now some of the uh, existing epc here on the left and then our current one on the right and as you can see some of the things are just rated as average now um even though we uh this uh 
300 millimeter loft insulation so we doubled what we originally had there um, in fact it's slightly more than double but you know we'll take it um, this pitched roof here is the uh, conservatory roof that you saw and despite the u value being just 0 0.15 it still came out with an average uh, rating on there. But of course, we know it's incredibly efficient. We've lived with it now through the winters. We we know it works really, really well. Um, air source heat pump. And uh, many people say that this, you won't get a very good rating. Um, the assessor that used that we used, she was absolutely brilliant. And uh, she was very keen to make sure the right make and model number was input to get the correct score. And the Valent Arathon Plus 7 kilowatt unit that we have, I think it's a, a triple plus rated unit. So it does give some good uh, points towards the SAP calculation. The programmer, room thermostat and TRVs. Um, so yes, we got some points for that and then the hot water system. Um, the lighting, uh, although on our previous one, uh, it stated 71% of fixed outlets. Um, I've completely gone through and refreshed LED lighting absolutely everywhere. And uh, yeah, they now can test some other things and they factor in some more things. And as you can see, it went from fully triple glaze being good to multiple glazing throughout average and uh, unfortunately some of the calculation is not is not a perfect parity between what was calculated in 2022 what's been calculated now in 2025 because they're always updating their methodology okay so in terms of the primary energy usage you can see that previously it was projected for 240 kilowatt hours per square meter and now it's projected at six kilowatt hours per square meter an incredible result in my opinion the impact on the environment this one for many people will be a big one and this one was something that was important to us alongside with a comfort alongside the other factors of a comfortable home and financial savings um, and so it was uh, estimated that our property was emitting 5.5 tons of co2 and now as a kind of net figure zero tons and uh, we're very happy about that so these were these previous uh, recommendations of how we could improve the home and um, now you can see there are no suggestions from our assessor and uh, she was brilliant um, really helpful and to be honest the cost of an EPC was so low I felt a bit bad for the amount of time and effort that she put into getting everything accurate and perfectly dialed in to make sure that we could get the best score that we possibly could um, and reflecting all of the updates that we've done to the property. So um, chatting to uh, two different estate agents, they both um denied and said, well, yes, if you change your EPC score from a 54E to a uh, 99a then yes it will be a more valuable property uh, but you will need to find the right buyer that will uh, see the value in that and uh, they couldn't really put a figure on it they just said it will make the property a lot easier to sell not necessarily make the property inherently more valuable um, and so I asked uh, chat GPC and Gemini a couple of large large language models asked AI I asked it to take all of the uh, data uh, publicly available data of house prices within my wider postcode uh, the advertised price of those properties the result in sale price over the last five years and I asked it to factor in the EPC ratings as well to uh, use that as a benchmark on comparable streets and comparable uh, subdivisions of the postcode and then work out for me what was the actual uplift for properties that had a, an EPC score that was uh, much higher and so there that it some of this is an extrapolation from some of the data and there was a lot of backward and forward uh, with AI but both uh, Gemini and both ChatGPT came to a similar sort of conclusion that if for argument's sake in theory our home was the existing value was five hundred thousand pounds by improving the EPC from a 54e to a 99a 
we could add somewhere between 50,000 to 100,000 pounds worth of value. That's 10 to 20 percent. And um, I actually then went back and I said, can you try this postcode? Can you try that postcode? And although it seemed to have quite a good amount of data for the wider postcode in my area, it was interesting to see that that trend was something that looked like that was a reasonable trend. So if your home is an E-rated home and if you improve it to an A-rated home, then you should, in theory, be able to uh, anticipate an uplift in the value of 10% and possibly 20%. That may be optimistic, but as you can see here on screen, uh, AI was saying maybe a midpoint there. Maybe it's 15% uplift, and so maybe we could look at that at adding £75,000 worth of value. I hope this has been helpful to you. Um, of course, we didn't spend anywhere near that amount on the upgrades that we uh, did to the property. And so although we don't plan on selling the property, we don't plan on moving, um, we're enjoying the comfort that we live in, uh, both in terms of thermal comfort, but also zero bills and kind of the, uh, I guess, the mental comfort of having a little bit more breathing room. Um, it's just peace of mind, I guess. It's good to know that the money that we've put into our home, it has added value outside of the immediately obvious and the uh, tangible benefits that we can experience right now. If you're interested in content that can help you save money on your bills, make your home more comfortable, add value to the property of your home or cut carbon emissions, make, your, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching so much. Thank you for watching. Please join me in a future video.